three homeschool trends that have died in 2022. Have you ever scrolled through Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, and you see these beautiful pictures of these amazing homeschool rooms, routines? I don't know. It's just amazing. It's so pretty. I just, I don't even know what to do with it. <laughs> it makes you say, oh my goodness, I want a boho inspired homeschool. Oh, I want, I want a simplistic, like it just it gives you all the feels. Half of these people, I love y'all. I love y'all. But in on this channel, we're going to talk about it. This is not normal. This is not what you should expect coming in for your homeschool to look like. If it is, you did it, girl. You did it. But that's don't judge yourself or your homeschool according to what you see on YouTube and Instagram. And for this reason, that is why I'm giving you these trends because you need to know. People aren't always doing what's circling around in our community, all right? I'm excited, let's get it, let's get to work, let's see what we gotta do, yeah. So the number one trend, the first trend, they're not in order, but these are the three. The first trend, an over-planned morning basket. In case you don't know, a morning basket is a time in which it's like a family subject, like everyone comes together and you're doing one thing. It can be devotional, poetry, tea times, reading, read alouds, puzzles, games, all the things, whatever. This is generally where you get the best Instagram photos. Like everybody's around the table. It's like eight kids, they're around the table and they're just, they're like posed and they all look really productive <laughs> early in the morning. <laughs> the light is right. That's morning basket, okay? Why did this trend die? So for many families, mornings, they look so different. Everyone doesn't get up at nine o'clock or eight o'clock or seven o'clock and have this structured thing, right? Some people start with nature walks. Some people start with work. Some people start outside playing, being around friends, whatever. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're all just coming to the, the table and we're gonna have this family time and this tea, right? And what I've noticed recently is that a lot of influencers have retracted what they have said uh, regarding like morning baskets. So you'll see videos, and you might even see one here, but you'll see videos and I mean, the morning baskets have like 84,000 things in them. Not 84,000. They have like maybe 10, 10 things that they wanna go over in a morning. Where do you have time to do that? I'm just saying. So it becomes overwhelming. Like you get involved and entrenched in the things versus the experience and the learning um, aspect of what morning basket really should be. So hear me out. I'm not saying morning baskets are bad. Okay, trend number two. Actually reading, read aloud. <laughs> so don't feel bad if you don't have a talent. You can read. I'm sure everybody, well, maybe everybody. Well, I'm sure we can read, right? Don't feel bad if you don't have a talent to make these books come to life. That is not everybody's gifting. Bruh. Let me stop playing. I like doing voices and different things. You know, uh, I do my thing. However, that's not everybody's stuff. I love it. Fantastic. And you should not feel bad if that's not your thing. So if you're scrolling and you see read alouds for March, and there are like 12 of them. And you're like, when? <laughs> when? When? And how? How, sis? How, how am I doing these read alouds? Don't feel bad. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you, Lord. What? You heard what I said. Audible, YouTube, Epic, they all have read aloud books. And oftentimes these books are the same books that you're getting from the library, the same books that you purchased. Just before you do it, before you actually purchase it, just go on these programs and just take a look, scan a look, right? And see if they have the book on there. This does not mean that you're gonna have, you know, technology reading to your kids every time. However, you might wanna enjoy the book with them without facilitating the reading so for example, I have an action Bible. 
an action bible i'll tell you guys about it later in another video you're gonna love it let's not get sidetracked the action bible has an audible that reads the production is like a movie whoa that's fire look for it's so nice way better than what i could do the trend i had. don't feel like you have to just sit here and read and hope that everybody's catching me okay it's dead get you an audible girl trend number three listen let me tell you something about myself i i love you guys okay however y'all can hear my feelings that's exactly what i said some people might be upset by this this is not for you so just let it go this trend has set so many people free. When I first started coming on YouTube and like looking at things and ooh, what do I do? When I first started homeschooling and I was like, man, what do I do? What shouldn't I do? What's best for the kids? You will see a lot of things about like screen time. You have some families who are very, very um, strict about how much screen time they want to give the kids. Some of them say none. Not none. <gasps> these babies are going to read these classics. And that's, they are going to, no. Some people like, bring it on. And that's all the kids do. I like to be somewhere in the meat middle, right? Like not too much, but we're not afraid of it, right? So this trend of anti-screen time policies is dead. I'm sorry, it's gone. We live in a world where Technology is not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, we're being thrown into it. We do not, to be in a position where you are not equipping your children to navigate responsibly or to even understand how to move within that type of landscape. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know if I agree with that. Um, not that my opinion matters. I'm just telling you. So for all the screen time, please keep it. Keep it on you. Hold it dear. It's not for me. We use technology. Many homeschoolers use technology um, to incorporate and to really bring to life their lessons. So you have everything from virtual, um, virtual experiences, virtual field trips, documentaries, music, um, coding, science, explorations. There's so many things that you can do um using technology and that involves the screen so your kids aren't necessarily on the screen watching netflix and youtube kids all day that's not what i'm saying at all there are programs though that will require a screen and i don't want i, I hope what you're hearing is be open to these things and don't look at homeschooling as an opportunity for you to craft the perfect thing for you and your ideas. Remember the experience is a shared experience and mostly it's, for, it's, your, it's your child's experience. And when you think about that, what do you want them to be exposed to? What type of experiences? How can you enlighten, you know, invigorate their learning and make them excited about the things that they're learning? What can you use strategically and monitor and be responsible with to make sure they are immersed in whatever it is you're trying to, you know, present to them. So take advantage of everything that's here. That trend of the screen time police and my kids don't use no screens ever. It's not him. Okay. All right. Those are our three tips. The things that have died in 2022. Don't fall into these little traps when you're on YouTube and on social media. Do what's best for your homeschool and uh, create experiences that you know your child is going to appreciate for years to come. All right, I hope you enjoyed these tips. I'll see you in the next one.